The purpose of this video is to familiarize you with the FLT93 and to demonstrate how to set the relays. Hi, I'm Alan Kuge, Product Training Manager at FCI. The FLT93 is a flow, level, and temperature switch that uses a thermal dispersion principle of operation. The sensor element has two thermal wells, each containing a platinum resistor temperature detector, RTD. One of the RTDs is heated, the other RTD is left unheated as a reference. This creates a difference in temperature between the two RTDs that varies with the flow velocity and the thermal conductivity of the process fluid. The FLT-83 sensor is available with this type shown here, it's an S-type, think sturdy. This could be removed from the line in dirty applications, you can clean it with a rag or steel wool and put it right back into service. In gas applications that may require a faster response time, we also have an F-type sensor that has thinner thermal wells. Standard materials of construction are 316L stainless steel. In applications that are corrosive and require exotic metals, we also have Hassel IC, Monel 400, Titanium Grade 2. Process connections are threaded connections as shown here, flange connections of various sizes, we have compression fittings with adjustable insertion lengths, we also have packing gland assemblies for insertion through a ball valve in hot tap installations. Probes are available with short lengths like this for small pipes, or you can have real long lengths for large pipes and ducts. The electronics are located inside the probe enclosure, with the exception of cases where you want remote electronics, in which case a terminal strip would be located in this enclosure with up to a thousand feet of FCI provided cable running off to a remote electronics enclosure. Now let's take a closer look at the 5208 circuit board. The 5208 circuit board has a top and bottom board. The top board is connected to the bottom board by these two screws. So you loosen them up and you grab the top board by the transformer, pull it straight out, make sure the power is off first. The bottom board is connected to the enclosure by these two hex nuts. You connect your power to the TB1C connection here and your ground to this lug that's attached to the enclosure over here. There are two jumpers, a red jumper and a blue jumper. The red jumper is for 120 volt AC, the blue jumper is for 230 volt AC. This is the active slot, and this is now configured for 120 volt AC. If I wanted 230 volt AC, I would simply swap the two jumpers around. This is just a holding spot, there's it's no, no electrical connection there. If I was going to use 24 volt AC or 24 volt DC, I would ignore the position of those two uh, red and blue jumpers and connect direct, directly to the TV4 connection over here. Now, on the bottom of the top board is, a, is an insulator that has a handy jumper selection guide. The heater wattage control jumpers are shown here for both the S and the F model. For liquids, typically J32 is used, hydrocarbons J12, gases J13. It's a gas application with a low velocity set point, J14. The, uh, the reason why we have these different heater wattages is because liquids have a greater cooling effect upon the probe, so higher heater wattages are required in uh, wet applications. The alarm uh, selection, quantity selection uh, section over here is for determining if you're going to use two alarms or one alarm. There are six amp relays on the circuit board. They're of the form C type, which is the single pole double throw, and they can be set for flow, level, or temperature independent of each other. But if a double pole double throw relay configuration is required, you can use these jumpers to gang the two relays together so that they work simultaneously to control two discrete circuits. So J23 is to have two independent single pole double throw alarms, but if you want one double pole double throw relay, you would select J22. The alarm duty jumpers are used to set the purpose for each relay. For example, you can set both relays for flow, or one for flow and one for temperature. I'm going to turn the board over now and give you a tour of where these jumpers are located. Going around the board, we have the heater wattage selection, uh, heater wattage control jumpers here. You have the alarm quantity jumpers here for alarm two. You have the alarm duty jumpers for alarm two. The relay energization jumpers for alarm two. And over here you have relay energization for alarm one. Alarm duty for alarm one, and you have the temp comp jumpers up here for the entire instrument. The FLT is called the flex switch because it's very flexible to set up in the field. 
Each relay has a normally open and a normally closed connection, but in addition, these jumpers can be used to have the relays energize on flow or instead to have them energize on a no-flow condition. Temperature compensation. Every FLT93 is installed in a special test stand at FCI to provide a factory set temperature compensation. We do this to maintain accuracy under changing process temperature conditions. If you're, if you're monitoring air that's coming in from the outside in the summer and you set the trip point and then winter comes and it's a lot cooler, um, the set point could drip. But by having temperature compensation, it keeps that, that set point accurate regardless of those process temperature changes. So that's why we do it and that's why we have it on the circuit board. We use uh, R5, R8, and R13 and we set those at the factory and then we, we coat them with a special varnish to seal the adjustment. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate how to set the relays on the FLT93. I have it here installed in the pipe, but make sure that you check all your jumpers before you apply the power. Once you apply the power, allow 15 minutes for the instrument to fully warm up before you attempt to set the relays. I have a digital multimeter here connected. I have it set on 0 to 20 volt DC. I've got the leads connected to the P1 connector. Pins 1 and 2, positive on 1, negative on 2. By the way, pins 3 and 4 are your temperature output. I have the run switch, uh, into, I have the S1 switch in the run position and I'm measuring about 7.3 volts in this line with no flow. So I make a mental note that my no flow voltage out of the instrument is about 7.3. Now I'm going to turn the fan on and I'm going to watch the voltage drop as the increasing velocity is cooling the probe. I'm going to allow this settle down to determine what my flow voltage is from the sensor element. And I already know it's stabilized at about 3.3 volts, so I'm going to turn the fan off here. Now in order to set the switch point, I have to do some simple calculations. I know I have about 7.3 volts at no flow, 3.3 volts at my normal flow, so I pick a voltage halfway between the two, 5.3, as my set point. I turn the S1 switch into the calibrate position, and when I do that, I remove the sensor element from the electronics, and I'm able to simulate flow with the R24 set pot that's right next to the S1 connector. And what I will do here now is I will turn it clockwise to get it up to 5.3 oh, right there. So now I've got, I'm simulating a flow right between flow and no flow condition. And I now go to the R26 set pot for relay number one to actually set the switch point. Now, the LED is off, so I want to make it come on. If the LED was on, I'd want to make it go off. I just want to make it change states at this point. So to make it come on, I turn it clockwise. If I want to make it go off, I go counterclockwise. So I just turn it until it comes on. Switch point is done. Put the switch back into the run mode. The voltage returns to my voltage at no flow because they got no flow in the pipe. I turn the fan on. You see the cooling occur. Voltage drops and it reaches 5.3. The relay changes states. Done. Alright, so I've just demonstrated how to set the relays according to instructions in the manual, which is to determine the voltage at no flow and the voltage at your normal flow and to set it for a voltage halfway between the two. That allows for an equal response time going from flow to no flow and going from no flow to flow. There's a, there's a response time required as the probe heats up and cools down. If you have an application where you want to optimize the response time to make it absolutely as fast as possible to detect the flow condition, for example, maybe you have a safety relief valve and you want a very fast response time in a failure condition. In that case, you just leave the switch in the S1 position and you don't even have to use a digital multimeter at all. You have a line here that has no flow in it and so the LED is on indicating no flow and what I want to do for the relay alarm is I just want to turn the set pod here to make the light go off. I 
I just want to make it be able to go off and on so I know I'm right on the set point like that and then I'm just going to leave it in the on position because on it always indicates a loss of flow and there's no flow in the pipe. So I want to leave it in that condition. Now I'll get a very fast response time. If the safety relief valve blows, I have my alarm just that fast. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple wet dry switch point on the FLT93. Here I've got the FLT93 hooked up to my digital multimeter on the P1 connector. I'm getting about 7.3 volts out of the dry sensor element. Both of my LEDs are on, indicating it's dry. I will dip the probe into the water, and you'll notice how the voltage immediately begins to go down as the probe is cooled. And I know it goes down to about 1 volt if I leave it in the water for a period of time. I'm going to take it out of the water. Now I know I get 1 volt in a wet condition, 7 volts in a dry condition, so I'm going to set my switch point at 4 volts. So I move the calibration switch, S1, into the cal position, and I will turn the calibration potentiometer to 4 volts. And I will go to the relay that I want to set, to relay number 1 over here. The LED is on, so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise to make it go off. You just want the relay to change states. Okay, so now my alarm is set. I just put it back into the run mode. The LEDs come back on, indicating dry because it's dry. Now I put it into the water, and you watch the voltage drop, and the, I've got an alarm already. I take it out, and dry it off a little bit here, and then we'll have the reset uh, of the relay. And it's as simple as that.